but now we'll hear you. So, <laughs> so a couple of months ago, I have five children, high school, middle school, elementary, and I, for years, I've had a very strong feeling I'm supposed to work with children to help them learn mindfulness meditation. And so a couple of months ago, I sent an email to the principal of the elementary school, the middle school, the high school, and I let them know I was willing to come in to speak about mindfulness. And then I mentioned that that kind of freaked them out, that a parent was reaching out. I said I was willing to financially support somebody else doing that. And the elementary school principal actually responded within a day, went to the teachers, and he came back a day later and said, we'd like you to speak to the entire fifth grade, which is over 200 children, 200 students. So in two weeks, I'm doing that, which I've never done before. But so first I sweated, thank you. So first I sweat, and then after that I put together a presentation and I feel really good about it. I was gonna ask you, but honestly, I just kinda know that if I just follow my heart, whatever comes out that day in, in two weeks is gonna you know, be what it should be. So I actually feel really good about it, unless you have anything to add, yeah. That explains what all of this was about. Because never have we gone into so much detail in helping anyone understand what the basis of it is and why it's of value. So there'll be a really easy integration of this piece into what you're doing. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited about it. So thank you again. And yeah. you might start by telling the fifth graders yeah. that you believe that you are there with them because they are most conducive to rendezvousing with what you've lived your whole life to find and tell them that you had it when you were in fifth grade and then lost it for yeah. a while yeah. Yeah. and so part of the reason that you're there is to help them shore up what they've got so they don't lose it right and part of it is because like a vampire you want to suck their blood and get some of it back <laughs> i don't i don't think i'll say it that way but uh we're just being playful but you get the sense because they've got it going on right. this will be a really wonderful unfolding well and i'll finish the only fine line is it is a public school and so i have to be i'm going in under the premise of mindfulness and i have to play that very fine line because if it gets too spiritual i'm sure i'll get kicked out of there so i'm going to work it just just right so. so you have the words already or you want some from us if you'd love to share take them. so spiritual is a fine word but people aren't always ready for it Focus is a word that they understand. Empowerment is a word that they understand. Invincible is a word that they understand. Sports metaphors, they understand. Being in the zone, they really understand. Tapping into the whole of who you are is a little too spiritual, but getting in the zone is something that they understand. A lot of people can go through the motions and affect a physiological condition, bigger muscles, faster speed, better throwing of the ball, better eye-hand coordination. In other words, those are all physical things that people can accomplish. But what makes the difference between those who are enormously great at it and those that are just sort of going through the motions of it is the mindfulness that you are talking about and so you might talk about the practice that they do the practice that they're doing like any of you playing basketball you might say or any of you pitching a ball and you might say each time you do it you develop a way to have less resistance if you're really good at it in order to throw a really fast ball you can't be waving your arm all over the place before you let go of it. You've got to get everything in your body sort of moving with the momentum of that. And those who are really good at that, who trim a little fluff off here and a little fluff off here, they are the ones that really get speed into their ball. But then there are those who understand that there's some momentum before that momentum, that there's momentum before the physical action starts taking place. And that's mindfulness, say to them. And so by the time you will convince them that they are really wanting this advantage of this momentum before the momentum, because a lot of people get their momentum going and because they haven't practiced the mindfulness and then lay this one on them because it's our best work. <laughs> There's not enough action in the world to compensate for not being mindful. No, that's good. You can't and, and actually that's why I love the word mindful because it's such a, a standard word that pretty much anybody would accept. Mindful? I think it's a wonderful way to bring what we're talking we think about so here too. into more and more people's lives. So it's actually a wonderful word. I like. We it think a lot. so too. Yeah. Encourage daydreaming. Encourage mind flow. Right. Encourage free flow. Encourage ease. Just get them to talk with you about the things that they've discovered that feel the best to them, and then say, "That's it. Yeah, that's some of that. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it." 
No, I'm excited, so thank yeah. you very really much. Really good. Thank you. Really good.